Hey, hello, everyone. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, this is the Learn Azure by Moonlight. This is day 13 of our section. And today we have with us Mr. Jide Jimo. Mr. Jide Jimo is a Microsoft engineer. He will be speaking to us on the Azure Sentinel. OK, and uh, as part of our clean desk policy, not to not to interrupt the speaker, uh, if we have any questions, please, we, we should put it in the chat box. The speaker will continually look at the chat box for questions and he answers the questions. The reason for this is not to disrupt his flow so that um, we, we won't um, disturb his flow when he's speaking. And uh, it's recommended that every one of us should mute our mics up to the end of the section. At the end of the section, when it's done, we can open our mics and ask questions. But in as the section is going, if we want to ask any questions, we can post the questions on the chat box. So I want to believe this section is going to be interesting. We are going to learn one or two things or new things in this section. I'll be handing over to Mr. Jide Jimo to take us on this section. Mr. Jide Jimo, Jimo please. Thank you. All right, thank you, um, Paul. Um, I believe everybody can hear me. My name is Jide Jimo. I'm a Microsoft Cloud Solution Architect. Um, I focus on application infrastructure and um, security. Um, apologies, I've not been able to join earlier or take this course, take this training earlier on. Um, as we know right now, the, the world is depending on us to to run infrastructure, so we are actually very, very busy trying to to help the world um, work from home. OK, so um, session today is going to be around security. I don't know how many guys in the room um, is actively on security, actively monitor security, or you have one or two things in your day to day activities that has to do with security. Um, and I don't know if anybody in the room has worked with the same um, security solutions. Um, talking from the likes of Qreda, um, likes of um, uh, this was some of this Oracle um, solution and the rest. So um, the guys in the room, um, do we have anybody that does security? Anybody? Can you just raise your hand? So pardon me. Um, I don't know if you guys have this cool feature on Teams. Um, I do, maybe because I'm in Microsoft, uh, where you could literally click the raise your hand button and I get to see how many people is raising up their hand just for polls. Um, if you don't, um, we are expecting it is going to get to you very soon. It's already been rolled out. So let me share my screen. Do you have anybody, just before I start, um, you can unmute your mic. Do you have anybody that does security? And um, can you just tell me what your expectations are around the security, what you like to see more? Anybody? Yeah, hello? Yeah. Yeah. OK. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. OK, this is Femi Ajala. For hey, Microsoft I... as well. <laughs> so, so thank you for this section today. So when it comes to security, I do security as well. At least when it comes to Azure Log Analytic, and when it comes to to to, to Azure Monitor as a whole, and some other part of security as well, like cloud app security, like like EMS deliverables which is, is also one of the strongest part of security. So at least, so, so with this, so my expectation basically, I'm looking at Azure Sentinel. I know it's a bit similar to, to, to Azure Log Analytics, but I know it's pretty different. So I'm looking at something different and I hope that I will see something new today. Okay, great. Um... If I should allow you to talk last, I would have allowed you to talk last um, time because you have access to resources, <laughs> but it's fine. And anyway, someone else can go on. Yeah, hello. Yeah, I'm with you. Yes, my name is Albert, Albert Tete. Um, hi, hi, I'm Albert. also, yes, I'm also um, into security. Um, awesome. Most of the time, my security solutions have 
actually not been in the areas of uh, Microsoft, but um, my organization has uh, purchased uh, Microsoft and we are doing a lot of uh, deployments um, last year, this year. And I'm actually the security manager for my organization. And so um, I think this will give me an opportunity to appreciate the Microsoft solutions and the kinds of security um, um, considerations to look out for as far as uh, the Microsoft Azure platform is concerned. Okay. We deployed a number of solutions um, and gradually we are migrating into the Azure environment. So we are in the transit period. Um, okay. Yes. All right. Awesome. Um, can I take one more before I move forward? Um, is there another person that wants to be there? Yeah, good evening. Good evening. My name is Olawali Olaiku Bayati. So, good evening, everyone, actually. So, so I'm into um, security also. So, I work with um, Microsoft EMS and also Log Analytics when it comes to Azure Information Protection. So I'm I'm also I'm also looking forward to deploy something like a sim environment for my workplace, and this section will actually give me more knowledge to do it properly and also to see to have a bigger picture of what Azure Sentinel can offer. Okay, all right, great. Um, so you, you might all mute your mic and, and apologies if you're hearing background noise. I have my little little guy here working with me here. So um so we'll talk about I've heard all of your um expectations around Sentinel and it's good to know that we have security guys in the room. So you could go along with me. And for the guys that are not security guys, I believe you can learn one or two things from this um from this session. Okay, so um, today where we are at digital estates, and uh, what we mean by digital estate, um, people from the manufacturing industry, we have guys from the oil and gas, we have guys from the FSIs and all of that. Um, everybody's bringing in their own kind of data and all of that. And what that means is, hey, a organization is telling you that Bring in your devices. You could use your laptop, use your iPad, use your iPhone, use your Androids, all on corporate environment and use it to access corporate resources. What that means literally to the security guys is you are bringing all sorts of kind of device into their network, which they don't even have control over. And how do they make sure that they are optimally looking at the securities, optimally checking if there are loopholes and even mitigating them when one comes on? And that's where the traditional SOC challenges comes in place because you tell them, you tell a normal um, traditional security guy that, hey, I'm going to bring in my, my laptop at home. The guy doesn't even know what website you visited, doesn't even know what site you've gone, doesn't even know what you've done with those laptops. If it's infected with malware, with viruses, with ants, and all, all sort of, and you're bringing it to the corporate environment, then that can pose another challenge. Um, and that's where the traditional SOC um, comes in place. Now, with all of that, it's now a thing of the past um, for the security guys um, because you now have the power of cloud and artificial intelligence. And uh, when I mean by that is that's where the Sentinel comes to play. Now, don't look at Sentinel as your tra as your traditional SIM. It is a SIM appliance, but it does more than SIM. Um, so it's what we call, I think it's in one of my, my slides. Um, let me jump the gun. So it's what we call the SOA, security, orchestration, automation, response. Now think of it as your security SIM appliance. So we all know what we call the SIM, security information event um, monitoring. And what SIM would do is take all your logs from all of your computers, from all of your servers, all your application. It feeds all those logs into the appliance. It crunches over them, it checks over them and see, hey, I think there is a security on this part. I think someone is trying to log on multiple times on this device. Someone is trying to brute force this particular username and password and all of that. And that's what the SIM does. Now, what Sentinel does, it's way more than that because it's able to use artificial intelligence and machine learning to correlate from different sources 
what I'm seeing on this part, does it correlate with what I'm seeing on the network? Does it correlate with what I'm seeing on the devices? If yes, then definitely something is going on and it's able to tell you what is going on and also you're able to investigate. So we're going to go into demo. Um, I have a demo set up already for this um, session connected to some resources inside um, Microsoft backend, which we use for demo sessions. So um, it's a cloud native, um, Sentinel is a cloud native sim for intelligent security analysts and for your whole entire enterprise. Um, so you're not limited by the cloud speed. Literally, you wouldn't be limited by that. Um, you could bring in your own Office 365 data for free. So what that means is you're ingesting Office 365 data into Sentinel and you wouldn't have to pay for that. Um, it's integration with existing tools. So if you have your SIM appliances, you have your network appliances, you have your um, even um, anti-malwares and all of that, you can all ingest that into Sentinel and it's going to um, get that for you. And also you have your fast, a faster threat protection using AI um, by your side. So what are the advantages you have with the Microsoft Security Advantage? Um, well, it's no news that Microsoft makes over a billion um, dollar annual investment on security. We have over 3,500 global security experts. And I'm not just talking about someone that does um, security and does maybe infrastructure. These are security guys really monitoring security end to end, going into the dark web, looking at looking everywhere all from security standpoint. So we have what we call the red team and the blue team, and you have the red team trying to hack Azure and the blue team trying to protect Azure. And this is what they are paid for. This is what their KPIs are. They actively would try to do that and they will actively try to protect that. Um, it's what they are being paid for. Over 3,500 of those security experts that does that as a day-to-day -day activity. And over three, over trillions of diverse signals from unparalleled intelligence, which we get. So we have a whole SOC team. Um, SOC um, Center, where we are looking at all the securities around the world and we're able to tell, hey, this new, this is the trend of what we're seeing. And we take all those learning into our security devices and give it out to the user for them to also leverage on. So limitless cloud speed. Um, so focusing on security, um, you won't be burdened by all of the data injection and all of the data crunching, all of the AI machine learning and all of that. If you're going to take that kind of capability to your on-premise environment, then you'll be looking at some massive hardware because one, you'll be talking about the space, two, you'll be talking about the hardware and the speed, you'll be talking about your machine learning algorithm, which you have to update every time. And also you need to now connect to a reliable data source. So when you're looking at, things from the security standpoint, you have to get someone to update that on a regular basis. So if you're going to think about building that on-premise, then you must really be a security company to, to do that and um, see the limit of um, resources you're going to have, the, also the, the infrastructure, the maintenance and all of that, um, while Sentinel is going to take that burden away from you. So it helps you reduce your security and IT costs. Um, you have your SIM appliance. Yes, your SIM appliance is meant to correlate all of those logs for you. But if you want to add machine learning on top of that, then that's where you get to hear the OEMs tell you that, hey, we have what we call the events per second billing. And they tell you the licenses you have can only carry through 2,000 events, sec events per second. For some organizations, I've seen um, people or I've seen organizations basically would I have a lot of data that they just up to 5,000, 6,000 events per second. And that's because of the number of data estates they've got. Um, how do you get to limit that? How do you get to, to reduce your cost on that when you're limited by 2,000 events? Then definitely some things are going to slip through, which you're not going to see because your licenses doesn't allow you to take or ingest all of the data you have. And also you can bring in your own Office 365 for free. So you can integrate with existing tools and data source. And I'm um, talking about things like your Microsoft Azure. I'm talking about things like um, Office 365. Pardon me, guys, just a minute. Things like Office 365, ATP, um, Endpoint Protection, Microsoft Defense, um, Advanced Trust Analytics, 
even your third party solutions, Fortinet, Checkpoint, Semantic, Barracuda, F5, and, and all of those um, solutions. Um, you don't need to do anything much. All you have to just do is go to the connector, connect them to the right um, data source, and then you have all the data ingested into Microsoft Azure. So it's optimized for your need. Um, allows you to bring in your own insights, machine learning model for security organizations that wants to do more than what we've provided. You can bring in your machine learning, your own threat intelligence, and also you can tap into the security community. Um, we have that on GitHub where people have gone and written uh, playbooks and workbooks and all of that, all being vetted by Microsoft. You can also just tap into that, um, get those playbooks, deploy them into your own environment, and then you have all of those um, all of those additional features um, enabled for you. So AI by your side. Um, it's no news that everything these days, everybody's talking about machine learning, everybody's talking about artificial intelligence, and because that's the level of where you could get things to. They could literally proactively and predictively tell you and show you stuff you don't even know that they exist. Um, they are able to take A plus A and then tell you, hey, this is going to be B or this is going to be C based on the um, trend and all of the, the learnings they have built over time. Um, so this is a model that based over that decades of Microsoft security experience and learning and what, we live, what we've learned over the years. Um, we are bringing this into the security um, environment and then we're giving it to the customers. And also it helps you reduce a lot by 90%. This is massive. For every security guy will tell you, those alerts are basically just killing because you get to, so what you get is you get a lot of alerts for one particular, um, security and because of those alerts you turn them off and that's when something real goes in that's when something real goes um goes through pardon me for the background this guy is here with me so you sentinel can help you investigate threats with ai and on suspicious activities by tapping into years of cyber security at microsoft um, you have the automated expert guidance, and this is where you're able to investigate what's going on in your environment. You can act proactively on. So when I mean proactively, you could go into your environment and on for stops. Like, okay, it's not coming up on the incident dashboard, but I want to know, does this happen in my environment? And this will go look at your event logs, look at all of your other data source, and tell you, hey, this is what we are finding in your environment. And you can use that to create an alert or create an incident if that happens then, um, again. So rapid response, um, rapid response built into the orchestration. And this is where I said it's the SOA, the security orchestration, the automation, and the response. Um, that's what makes Sentinel um, more unique than every other um, SIM appliance out there. Um, because you have the automated um, Playbook. I don't know if you guys have had a playbook as one of your sessions um, during this moonlight because um, it's really cool. It helps you with business logics and the rest. Um, we leverage that too for the automation, and that's where we're using the Azure Logic Apps. Um, Logic Apps would help you build that automation. You can send an email for approval. You can send uh, communication to your. You can open the ticket using your service now or. Um, Microsoft's um, service, um, security service um, for your ticket or Jira, whatever you use as your IT service management tool. Um, you could send, say, a kill switch to your F5 or to your Barracuda and say, hey, because I'm finding this user uploading large content, can you just disable this user temporarily and all of that? or even just take out this user from Office 365, disable them temporarily while we investigate what's going on. And all of those automated response can also be built using the Azure Logic Apps. So um, these are some of our um, partners and early adopters and um, what they have to say Accenture. Um, we work with Accenture greatly on this and um, they have been able to use this for their clients and build Sentinel in their client environment for, for service management. Um, so actions today, what do you need to do? Um, get started, open the Azure Sentinel preview dashboard. Um, it's no more in preview, so it's in 
Um, it's now in global availability and also connect your data source. Um, fine. Do we have any questions before I move on to the demo? Anybody can unmute yourself. Okay, so. Uh, hello, yeah, sorry. We, yes, go on. Um, my name is Muidin. Um, yeah, while you were going on the in the class, you were saying something regarding um, cyber security and uh, threat analysis. Yeah. Using this. Yeah, I wanted to know, is it possible for this particular system to be integrated with uh, an on-site premise whereby you can fetch data and do all the analysis for you while you log in there and pull out? Yes, it can. Um, so the way it works is Sentinel is built on top of log analytics. Um, log analytics is more like the data oh, you know, collection. On-premise. Um, yeah, yeah, so you could have your oh, on-premise okay. con data collector, and then you can pull all of those event logs from those on-premise environments. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Thank you very much. Exactly, yeah. Any, any other question before we move on? Okay, so um, this is my environment, and pardon me for all of these um, different uh, workspace and the rest. So you search for Sentinel. Azure Sentinel um, brings you to the workspace. If you have it already set up, I'm just going to use the cyber security workspace, um, what I've done. So this is what the Sentinel dashboard looks like. There's really nothing really fancy um, in here. Um, the whole point is just not to make it look cumbersome for the security guys. You could go in, set up a Sentinel in less than 30 minutes, and you start to ingest and start to get um, events um, ingested and start to get incidents also being shown on the dashboard. Um, this is what the dashboard looks like and the overview page. You have your events over time, what your alerts is look, what the alert looks like, um, what the Shirts. This guy has not broken my phone. What the alert looks like, the performance, the behavioral analytics, and some other um, events you have. Um, also, to your right, you have your recent incident, which we're going to look at, and also some data source and anom anomalies. Um, you have some anomalies from the VM inbound, threat intelligence, and all of that. It's able to show you all of that too. And also some potential malicious events. So you can see by geography where each of those events are coming from um, and all of that. OK, so the first thing to look at is your data connector. We spoke about having to connect to different data sources to ingest all of your data. Um, we could connect to, your, to Amazon Web Services for organizations that leverage um, some resources in the AWS environment that leverage some resources in the AWS environment. We, at the moment, we do about six months of data collection for free from the Amazon environment. So if you have some resources in there, we could plug it into Sentinel for you and show you if that thing is going wrong inside of it. So this is even to look at your cloud trail, your AWS um, resources, EC2, S3, and all of that. Also, we do the Azure Active Directory, which is a directory store for our cloud service providers. Azure activities, Azure advanced stress protection, um, security center, we could also ingest from security center, um, from Barracuda, from Checkpoint, um, CyberArk, um, CEF. So for some organizations, um, what they have is, they'll tell you, hey, we want to just ingest what we have in our SIM appliance into Sentinel. We don't want to go about setting up any other thing. Um, this is very possible, and this is possible with your common event format. Um, all the SIM appliances and network appliances support the common event format. If they don't, they will support the syslog um, format. The syslog format, they will support this. So it's either one of the two or both for some appliances, but most of them do comply to this common event format. So you have your DNS, your extra op, your F5, Your F5, your CASB, um, four point CASB, your Fortinet, um, Cloud App Security, 
Microsoft Defender Advanced Threat Protection, the Web Application Firewall, FIS 365, Palo Alto. And you can see there's a whole lot of um, solution, data connector, data sources you could connect to. Um, if you can't find the data source in here, you could connect to the security event, or better still, you could connect using your Windows Firewall um, for the Windows um, devices. And this would also serve you um, the purpose. Okay, so I'm just going to take um, say Sentinel Security Center, for example, click on the open data connector. Um, it's very easy. If this is the subscription you use, you could use easily just um, click one of those subscription um, like this. I manage this um, Contoso manage subscription. Um, click on connect and um, that's it. It's just going to connect and you can start ingesting data into Sentinel just like that without any additional additional step to, to, to go on. With. All right, so that's done about the data connector. Anybody wants to ask another question before we move on? Just wanted us to be sure we're carrying, we're Hello. going along. Yeah, hi. Uh, regarding the connected to a particular data source, does okay. it work with um, Hello, I didn't get that. To get the name of the, the thing. Fetch, when you're fetching your data from on uh, from on premises. Yes. Take for instance, you're pulling data from on premises. Does it work with sensors? What kind of sensors does it work with to be able to enable you uh, fetch these data to the platform? So when you mean sensor, what do you mean by sensor? Can you just give me an example? Like SNMP. Take for instance, it's fetched for using SNMP sensors to pull. OK, OK. So for SNMP, SNMP is basically um, network related. Um, and yes. with that, you use your common event format to do that. So okay. you have common event format. Um, you open the data connector page. You download the syslog agent into a Windows server, and um, you connect it using, you connect your um, to your Linux. So the uh, most of the devices run the Linux underneath them. You log on to the Linux environment and you install this agent in it. And that's how you're able to get your SNMP connection and all of those into Sentinel. All right, thank you. All right. Does anybody have any question around the data source, data connectors? OK, Hello. so yeah, I. Yeah, um, concerning the data connectors, um, what does Microsoft mean by you can connect Office 365 data for free? Is there charges for using your, like um, syslog, AIP, and um, Active Directory, all those kind of connectors? Yes, there is. Um, just a minute. Uh, just a minute. Let me know. You can see my screen, right? Okay, so um, if you search for the Azure Sentinel pricing, um, it opens the Azure Sentinel overview page for you. And inside of it, you have an FAQ just down below the page. Um, inside the FAQ, there's a section that says what data can be ingested at no cost to Sentinel. Um, your Azure activity logs, Office 365 audit logs, both the SharePoint and Exchange, a lot from Microsoft Threat Protection, that's Security Center, Office 365 ATP, Azure ATP, MD ATP, that's Microsoft Defender ATP, um, MCAS, which we call the Microsoft Cloud App Security, Azure Information Protection, um, can be ingested and no additional cost into Sentinel and Log, and log Analytics. So if you're ingesting your Office 365 um, audit logs, if you're ingesting your Security Center, if you're ingesting your um azure atp and all of that you won't be charged for it is that clear yes that is clear thank you very much all right yeah you're welcome any any more question feel free to unmute yourself and ask um don't be shy okay so Let's go on to analytics. 
um, we're still under the configuration. And then um, we have some analytics rule already created for you by default. Um, so we have this rule template. Uh, you can see there are different analytics. Let me just um, scroll this so we can see. There are different analytics already created by default for you. Um, most of the time, you wouldn't need to create any one for yourself. Um, but I've seen um, situations where organization would want to create some unique features or some unique um, rules they want to monitor um, because they have some unique, um, and it, that's because each environment is, is unique. Um, so sometimes they have some things they want to monitor for, or some things they've been having issues with, um, some security challenges they've been having, and they just want to create some rules to help them monitor or catch all of those incidents if it happens. But most of the time, about 80% or 90% of the time, most organizations don't need to create any because they have everything they all need inside of these rules already created by Microsoft. All you just need to do is just turn them on and then they start to um, get incident for you. So we have things like um, create incident based on security center for IoT and um, this taking it to the next level. Um, IoT devices, we all know that they can easily be hacked. We've heard about Internet of Things where you have your home at your cameras, people watching you from your TV and all of that. You could connect all of that straight into security center and you just that security center into um, Azure Sentinel and you're able to see when someone even does anything malicious or tries to even get access into some of those devices. You're able to see proactively when when such happens and protect your devices from such. So we have things like the Talum domain included into DCU takedown. We have the advanced stage, advanced multi-stage attack detection and all of these um, incidents. This rare application consent for your Azure Active Directory, RDP nesting um, for your lateral movement, security event cleared. And when you see this, you know that yes, there is something going on when someone clears out the security event logs. Anomalies in sign-on by location. Um, this coming from Azure Active Directory also too. Brute force attacks, SSH potential brute force. And these are a whole lot of, you can say about, um, there's a whole lot of, of rules in here, um, templates which you can use. How do you activate them? Um, let me just take this for example, the sign-in from IPs that attempt to sign in to disable account. Take this for example, it opens up um and tells me hey i've not used this template before so all i just have to just do so pardon me i don't have right permission on this subscription i'm i'm using for this sentinel lab but all you have to just do is there is a configure button that happens in here click on the configure and um, that comes up Okay, so for my active rules, I have some of these enabled, um, like the PowerShell Empire is not enabled, but Mimcast and HTTP, successful brute force attack, um, cred theft, credential theft detected, and all of this um, currently goes on. And they can start getting me insight into what's, what's going on in the environment. Now, going to my incident. Now, I'm done with my data connectors i'm done with my analytics i've enabled the analytics i want to i want to start um, getting event or alert for um and i can start seeing the incidents come pop up so i'm looking for one of those red ones which shows high utilization or so like this um okay it's not enough for me to go on um Okay, you know what? Let me just do severity and let me do I and then um, filter by that. If you have any any question, please do ask. Okay, so um let me take this for example, the rear RDP connection. Um this will be very interesting to see. And um, it tells you description of what it is. Um, RDP connection by the event ID 4625, which is the logon, and 4624 4624 rather for the logon and 4625 for the log log off. 
and then you can see for the RPD connection with 4625 logon type equals to 10. And I can see I have um, some um, event or some incident alert um, on that part. It shows me where my evidence is coming from, from my event and also my entities. And I can click on investigate. Um, this is what the security guys are going to do most of the time, the SOC guys. Um, they are used to investigating to say, hey, I saw this alert, but I want to know more. Is this a false positive? Is this, uh, is this true? And if I scroll, you can see all of this from the event or from the incident I created. Um, I can see some users, my whole Middle East, um, some other guys from Middle East, um, some computers in this and some IP addresses. Um, it's very easy for me to click on the RDP and click on info if I have anything on them. So like, like this guy, I can decide to click on info and um, it gives me more information on who this guy is. Um, it's from the Middle East um, domain. His name is my old, his friendly name is, is all of these. I can drill more into related alerts. So from this guy, I can see if he has any other alerts coming up, which all still tells me this guy is coming from the real RDP connection. Um, for this, I can drill more, and also these guys can show me more alerts. So if I look at my timeline, um, I can see more RDP connection. So definitely something is being used to compromise all of this. Um, this gives me more related alert and it's still RDP connection and all of this IP address. So with this, I can take down these two guys as a security guys and investigate more. Like, hey, you are trying something now which is failing or you're trying to log on to um, devices which you are not having permission to. Why are you trying to log on? What's the reason for logging on and all of that? And if the guy says hey, he's not trying to log on or he doesn't know he's trying to log on, then that tells for a compromised account or someone is trying to use his account to, to get into those, um, those devices. And we have proof that, yes, um, those accounts are being used. So that helps um, with that investigation. So now so, someone is going to ask me, what if I have things like um, admin activity? trying to give other people admin rights, which was not permitted in the organization. How do I account for that? Or I have some um, event or some uh, what, some other incident which doesn't show up in this of my all of my rules here. How do I try to, to mitigate that? How do I try to hunt for that? And that's where the hunting comes in play. So we'll click on hunting. And this is a proactive way of going to search if anything is going on in your environment. Um, you can see all of these hunting parameters. If I can scroll this up for you guys. So we have a wider space. So you can see all of these hunting um, devices or all on hunting queries, pardon me. Concepts of application discovery, reactivity initiated by users, DNS, logon URI field attempts by expired accounts. So you have expired accounts and you have your some field login attempts, then that's called for some security. Multiple password reset by user. Um, this will happen for admin, but for user, multiple password reset, then someone is trying to, or the user doesn't even, can't even remember his user name, um, his password, or someone is trying to reset the password on the, on the particular user's behalf. So we have all of this hunting, and this allows you to proactively hunt for your environment, what is going on. Um, you can run all of these queries, and um, under this result, just keeps running. Let's give it some time to run, and um, we're able to see if there's any results yet. This would query all of the old, um, in between all of this is what we call the crystal query language. Um, it has the crystal query language, which are all being written on your behalf. You don't have to go ahead and write yours. However, if you have some custom um, queries or some custom rules, one thing you want to do, um, you can go in to, to write yours. 
So let's look at this host with new logons. Um, this is going to be very important because these are hosts with people that have not logged on before. So this shows new accounts that have logged into onto host for the first time. This may be a clear signs activity, but an account logging on to multiple hosts for the first time can also be a lookout for evidence that for that account being used to move lateral across network. Um, we run the query and you can see what the query is like. We can view the result, and this will take you to log analytics. As I said, Azure Sentinel workspace is built on top of log analytics. So all of your data being collected from the data source are being stored in log analytics workspace, and it's being queried for you every time you run those alerts, or every time you run run those incidents. So here's our query. You can see what oh, I don't know why it's not bringing any. So here's our query. It's going to run where the event ID is 4626 and 4625, 4624 and 4625. And um, you can see all of this. So it brings up some activities for us, victim PC2, the control so that Azure, victim PC, and all of this computer name. So all of this computer name, they never had this new account logged on to them before. So we can go in there, investigate, hey, what's going on, this activi account activity on this particular host. Um, add, is this account name allowed to log on to this machine? If yes, then OK, this is a false positive. But if no, then we have to investigate more on what's going on. So you can see a whole lot of them, um, or different scopes of Microsoft. These are some internal services. Um, I'm connected to some of the internal Microsoft resources. So you can see MIA, CSS, 05, Middle East, or COP, or Microsoft com. And some of these accounts have never logged on, and they are logging on for the first time into the, all of into this um, account. You can see some other resources. IUS out. These are for um, for IIS, and um, they are logging on to this using RDP connection. And definitely, something is going on on all of these um, resources. So um, this is a proactive way of helping you look out if there is anything going on. Um, if you get a lot of this alert, and next time you want to make sure that you're on top of things, you can now create a new security rule, and this can help you create a new security sentinel Azure security alert. Do you want to ask a question? No, we are not seeing the screen. We are not seeing the screen. Oh, pardon me. You're not seeing the screen. Uh, we are, I'm seeing it now. Okay. Do I have anything in, on top of the screen blocking it? Probably it's from their network. Oh, okay, okay. So let me just um, go back. So um, from this query where we run, where you have all of this log analytics um, query being run, you could create a new Sentinel alert and Give this a name, so I'm going to call this my. Yeah, I think probably it's from the end from my side. It's clear. Okay, that's fine. Thanks. So I can call this my RDP connection alert. Um, what kind of tactics is it going to use? Um, I can also verify this from the tactics. So this. Um, security credentials and lateral movement. So credentials, lateral movement, the severity, it depends on how severe it is from my organization. I can decide it's high, it's low, and all of that. I can set my rule logic, and you can see I have some alerts coming in here. Um, I can define all of this entity, which most of the time are going to be defined inside of the query. Um, so you don't need to to this, to choose anything in here. My query squared link, I can decide I want this query to run every one, one hours. So every one hour is, is going to go run this query. If it finds anything inside of my um, environment, it's going to send an alert, it's going to send an incident. 
and it's going to look up from the last, also last one hour. Um, send an alert threshold, generate an alert if the number of queries is more than zero. So if I just even get just one of those query, I want to run an alert. And also I can suppress, so I can suppress running an alert. So if an alert has been running for, um, if the query has been running or generating alert for the past maybe one hour, I can suppress it and say, hey, stop running query for five hours, stop running queries for 10 hours, just to give some breather breathing space into into it. Um, but I'm not going to turn it. Next, um, I can decide to create an incident from alert triggered by this analytics rule. Um, I can turn it, enable this, and also I can enable alert grouping. Alert grouping will allow you to enable all of those alerts into one group, so you're getting one alert across just one. If they are a child of um, some alert, so you have things like RDP connection, and um, things like RDP nesting, things like host with um, new RDP connection and all of that, you can group them into one um, alert group, which basically is going to call the RDP, and you just get one uh, one incident when when that has been triggered. Okay, so next I can have my automated response. Um, this automated response allows me to be able to create automation into my account, so leveraging on Azure Logic Apps allows me to do automation, allows me to send um, emails for approval and all of that. And next, I can have my resources created using this particular rule query, which I have triggered. Um, I won't be able to create it because I, I don't have the right permission on this subscription I use for this for this test environment. Um, but however, this gives you some good idea of how to create um, some of those um, some of those hunting queries. So there are a lot of them. Um, you could go in there. Um, this live stream is in preview, um, but it allows you to be able to play and um, proactively hunt what's going on in your environment. So you could you could go in there, do some live stream, and then click keep running them. Um, just where you want to catch things as they happen on the fly. You want to see if truly they happen. You could have your live stream um, or it's in preview. Um, no time yet from the engineering team on when this will go live. Um, so it might go live, it might not go live. Um, if you think, see things in preview, you could try them out, but there is no guarantee that it might go live because it's still in preview. All right. so. Notebooks, um, we were talking about machine learning, artificial intelligence and all of that. Um, I'm pretty much sure someone's going to ask me around. You spoke about machine learning, bring in your own machine learning models. How do I do that? And this is where the notebooks comes in place. Um, this is based on Jupyter Notebook for the machine, for the ML guys. Um, machine Jupyter Notebook is a, I think it's a Google um, notebook, um, which we are, and Moreover, it's open source. Uh, Microsoft loves open source. Um, so we're a big contributor to the open source community and we'll keep on doing that um, also too. Um, so we have the Azure Notebooks also too. So whatever notebook you use, um, this uh, works. So we have the Office 365 Explorer and um, you can launch the, not the, the notebooks and you can see some machine learning models of what has been done. You can import it, you can bring in your own, and all of that. Hold on, let me just sign in. Okay. So I don't have any project yet on the Azure Notebook. Um, not yet, but this gives you some good um, idea of how to bring in your own notebooks. Um, you can clone, you can go to your notebooks and import them in. Playbooks. Um, these are good ways for you to add new playbooks, and this would add based on um, your Azure Logic Apps. There is one thing I love to do. Um, I don't know if anybody do, does that also, but I'm a good, I'm a fan of not reinventing the wheel. Um, I love to take what people have done 
and then just customize it for my it saves time i don't have to crack my head about things and i just start up from where they've stopped and just add some little little flavors to it maybe i need to send this to that i need to attach this connector and all of that and um, i just do all of that and now i have a brand new playbook for myself and i'm going to show you how to do that um reinventing the wheel or trying to start all over might be a bit ethic um, because you have to start thinking of how do I want this flow to look like? How do I want that to look like? And all of that. Um, it might be a little bit ethic for you guys. So I'm not going to start afresh with a playbook. But rather. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to go straight into the community. And that's where we have on the GitHub. So I'm just going to go to the Azure security community. That's Azure Sentinel. And there are a whole lot of resources available for you to use there. Things from bring your own machine learning model to the dashboard, to data connectors, to queries, to hunting. Hey, I forgot something. OK, we'll get back to it. To playbooks, to workbooks, documents, and all of that. Um, all this is all being vetted by Microsoft for you to use. You can use any one of them you so wish to. Um, so let's go to playbooks. As I said, I'm not a big fan of inventing the wheel, but hey, Microsoft has written a whole lot of playbooks available for me to leverage on and for me to use. So I want to do things like post message to Teams. I can take this. Um, being built by someone, I can deploy to Azure. This would go in there, deploy this to Azure, using the Azure templates. So I can put in my own particular domain, my region, um, and all of that, some different subscription I own, put them in there. And I have a playbook to use. So um, some of the playbooks I have in my lab environment, um, I believe this period can help anybody. So, so some of the playbooks I have in my environment, things like um, Sentinel Close Alert for M MDATP, Isolate, Reset User Password. And let's just look at this Sentinel Reset User Password. Um, this is built on Azure Logic App, as I said. I'm um, looking, looking at the logic app designer. And we can see how the data connectors have been sent. So it says when a response to Azure Sentinel is triggered, um, which is what it is, alert, subscription ID, resource group, workspace ID, system alert, and that's what it's going to feed in. And the next thing is to initialize password. So what's the name, password, the string, the value, um, set password parameter to unique grid and give account get account entity from the Azure Sentinel um, alerts. For each of these, you can decide, hey, I want to, for the account, I want to compose an email, send approval email to the SOC team to reset the password or ignore. Um, condition for email selection, if they don't ignore, or if they accept or if they approve, then it sends a dispatch endpoint to reset user, user password. If they decide not to approve that email, it's going to update Sentinel as, Sentinel as false positive and it's going to just close that. So you can see all of this. Imagine being able to use all of this inside of your Sentin Sentinel. The moment someone just tries to brute force or try to do a reset, multiple reset, and they're unable to reset their password, it can automatically send an email to SOC team and say, hey, can you just reset this person's password for him? or just deny and um, close that account. So this is the part of automation that comes into um, response and automation that comes into the Sentinel, all the original the logic apps. OK, so um, I have a couple of them. Um, so I want to post things like I, I have something around posting to Teams. Um, let me find that. Yeah, so post to post message to Teams. This can also help. So as I said, imagine you trying to build all of this right from your head. Can be tedious, but rather, why don't you just leverage on what has been done already? 
and you can use this to just you can leverage on this and just add some little more flavors to it and it's all been built for you so you can post to snow jira ticket for the guys that use jira for the guys that use service now also you can post to this and when the response is added um alerts get this okay it looks like i don't have access to this subscription where this playbook we're coming from you can send open ticket in jira say open zendesk for the guys that use zendesk for the it management uh read email messages post to teams just just think about it um all of this is gotten from the all of this i have here have been put inside of Uh, instead of our GitHub, our GitHub playbooks. So you could always leverage on this. So I said I missed out something great. And um, this is what the SOC team loves to look at every day. Um, I've been to a lot of SOC centers and for, from customer standpoint. They usually have this big gigantic screen. Everybody would look at every day as they're walking in, as they're going out. They look at the big screen. Sometimes they don't catch anything. Sometimes they just see some false positive and they don't even pay attention to it. Um, so most of the time, they just love to see all of those numbers crunching and going up and down, all of those graphs and all of that. It gives them some kind of joy. I don't know, maybe gives them those kind of joy to just see those, those going up. Um, but what I've noticed over time is the real deal of what they need to monitor. Um, there's so much information on that screen, they are not able to pinpoint it to just only what they want to monitor. Um, and that's things like, so you're looking at from the identity and access management standpoint, you're looking at file integrity monitoring, you're looking at network analysis, you're looking at um, emails and, exchange and SharePoint and all of that, and everything on one single screen. Hey, if anything is going wrong, how do you get to monitor that? How do you get to say, hey, this is what we need to be looking at, this is what we need to discard for now, or this is the alert we're getting, and this is what we need to start monitoring for the next 24 hours. And this is where workbook comes in place, because you're able to monitor just only what you need to monitor. So for example, you have some high um, bandwidth, maybe your, your network guys are telling you, receiving a lot of uploads. So our uploads are now maxing more than our downloads, then definitely something is uploading all, a lot of data in the environment. You could go into your Cisco ASA firewalls, get all of your workbooks. Um, so I can look at my dashboard. Um, I, I call them workbooks. They are more like uh, screens, if you ask me. Um, this allows you to see what's going on in that environment. Um, it looks like I don't have data from this. Okay. Okay. I have one Sentinel live screen which I turned on. So let me see. Fortigate, do I have data from this? Yeah, I should have data from this. Yes, so I do. Um, looking at my Fortigate in the last 30 days. And I can have this as one of my big dashboard or one of my big um, screen. Uh, my events categories, um, kind of events I'm looking at. Also, I can see what my actions are over the last um, 30 days. My users' activities, kind of activities they've been doing, um, root, admin, PI, test, progress, my application protocol for the network guys, HTTPS, ping, RDP, their destination port and all of that. Many times have they sent data, many times have they received. What's my data flow like? My sense and my receive and all of these um, workbooks. And also, what are my um, destination source and IP address I've been receiving over the past 30 days? My forwarded data, and this is the whole lot, my top five destination ports, my top five destination outbound port, my top five outbound in and inbound IP addresses. Um, I can always look at this. Um, you can see what IP addresses are my top bound for me. Um, also, my inbound IP addresses are the IP addresses that are coming inbound. These are the 
top five outbound ports, which is normal. 443 and 80 shows things are going on right. What about inbound? Have 3389 and um, 514. So basically, something is coming in on 3389. And um, I have a lot also coming in on 514, while a lot going on on 443 and a lot going on on 80. Um, so the next one, guys, this looks normal. And you can have all of this dashboard put on one big screen for your network guys to, to keep looking at. Um, this shows you what you need to see. So identity and access, also the same thing for the security guys. You can see what's going on with your identity and access standpoint. This is the last 24 hours. Um, I can see some machine activities, activities count. Um, this. Mia cars and some other victim PC, victim PC2, finance server, and all of this. Users activities, administrator, admin, and all of these activities. So this can give you a very good idea of what's going on. Jeff, local account support, backup, administrator, administrator door, and all of this um, going on. Um, also some full details of some accounts. So I can see a particular computer as they come in place. Um, pardon me. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. So you can see status field, time generated, and you can get more details. They count. So a particular account field. Um, I just want us to see this whole screen. So particular account field, um, which I'm trying to get for us. Administrator, so account field to log on, and it's filled time generated today, 1 a.m., filled 9,000 times. So this would call for investigation, for query, hey, what account is using this administrator, do we have administrator as one of the user name on those um, computer? If, we, if yes, can we rename it? Can we disable it and create something else and all of that? So um, this gives you a very good idea of what's going on. Also, all of the process that runs inside of your environment, um, this is able to also look at it from the process standpoint. What created what process? Was it running before? Did it stop? Was it newly created? And also your logon activity type. So, um, this brings us to, oh boy, we've spent so much time. This brings us to um, Sentinel, everything about Sentinel. You can see it's all one food dashboard, nothing much around it. Um, however, something is very important, and that's when it comes to pricing, pricing of Sentinel. It is very important um for us to get the pricing right because it can turn into a nightmare especially for the guys that own the budget um if all of your data are being ingested so i showed you the different data connector but if you go ahead to take in data from mcas office 365 windows event and all of all of the data source and what you will notice over time is you are having a lot of data you're ingesting every day um even though you don't need all of those data now, because the way Sentinel works is you're ingesting Office 365, MCAS, ATP, Microsoft, Defend, Microsoft Defender, Advanced Threat Analytics, <clears throat> Windows Security Event, Azure Security Center, all of those, they all have their own intelligence and own um, alerts built into them. What Sentinel is doing is just taking all of those intelligence, feeding it in, and correlating with other intelligence, and it's going to do a whole machine learning analytics on top of that to say, hey, truly, this is what is going on in your environment. So you don't need to ingest a whole lot of data into it for Sentinel to work. All you just need is different connectors um, you want to ingest. Um, the pricing of Sentinel is pay as you go. However, um, the engineering team just recently launched this um, pricing, uh, I will call them the optimization, pricing optimization, where you could have your Sentinel being reserved, the capacity being reserved for you per day. So for guys that ingest about 200 gig per day, um, it's about 55% discount when you do pay as you go. So if you're going to do pay as you go, you're being charged about $2.6 for every gig you ingest. 
Um, mm -hmm. If you do 200 gig per day, what that means is the price drops drastically over 55%. So you have 55% drop because you're doing the capacity reservation. You're saying, this is what I want to ingest every day, 200 gig, and that's what I want to pay for. If you do more than that in a day, you would pay for the other um, data, which is over 200 gig as pay as you go. And um, your Sentinel comes with a 90 days um, free data retention, which comes at no costs to, to the guys. Um, I don't know if anybody asks question. Anybody? Okay, just a minute. So before before we jump to the question um, standpoint, I have this. Um, I'm going to share this with everybody. So this was being built by um, Ofa. Ofa is a senior program manager at Microsoft with the engineering team. Um, actually, his team were the one that built Sentinel. So he's the program manager. He looks over the O's. Um, Azure Sentinel from Microsoft standpoint and what the customer wants to see and what the customer might not happy about. And it built this um, this tech community. I don't know how many of us are on this um, tech community, uh, Microsoft tech community. It's a good place for us to go. Um, it, it sent this yesterday. This is a complete 400 level training. So everything I'll be talking about, you could have a full video on this, um, talking about each one of those modules from the technical overview to the roles, to the cloud architect support, and all of that. Um, a whole full presentation, a whole full video, um, even the calculator, the multi-space, workspace, collecting events, log management, threat intelligence, the crystal query language, um, writing your own rules if you want to, and uh, creating your playbooks. Um, this is a whole full learning on Sentinel, it's level 400. So I'm just going to share this on the chat. For well, guys, how come I can't? Uh, hey guys, I can't paste. Okay, you know what? I'm going to send it to um, Paul. He can share it with the rest of the team. For some reason, I can't paste, uh, which is weird. So I'm going to share it with Paul. Um, you can share it with the with the rest of the team. Um, so I don't know if there are any questions. Hello? Anybody? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. So I want to ask about uh, integrating the the same. That is the Azure Sentinel. Okay. So let's say I want a graphical dashboard. Right. Let's say okay. I want to have the graphical dashboard. Uh, what I get on my same. To have a graphic dashboard like that. Um, is it possible I can integrate with Power BI or any other virtualized uh, data virtualization and uh, get that on the dashboard? Yes, you can. You can. Um, if you go to your incident. Um, Hello, do you get my question? Yeah, you want to integrate with Power BI. So, Hello, Imo. Hello, did you get my question? Yes, I do. Are you me? Yes, go on. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Okay, so um, under the incident, if you click on full details, if you click on full details, um, it takes you to the incident and on all of that. Um, you could go ahead to investigate, or better still, you could go for your hunting. So we spoke about hunting, how hunting would take you to workspace analytics from workspace analytics um, or log analytics workspace. Um, you could actually just um, to view result. You could actually connect it to your Power BI. So you could connect it to your Power BI. 
Zakle. Yeah, yeah, that's clear. Yeah. So, so apart from Power BI, is there any other virtualization solution? Let's say I have a third party virtualization solution I'm using. Uh, is it possible to check the results to a third party virtualization solution? No, apart from Power BI, you won't be able to because the workbooks um, are only. So, th this is a solution um, you would see with the security guys. Um, the security guys are not concerned about Power BI or virtualization. All they want to see is the data and um, being able to correlate the data. And that's why we have these workbooks in there. Um, well, you won't get anything more than that. Only the workbooks. You won't be able to connect it to a third party solution. So, any other question? Imo, I thought you wanted to ask a question. Hello, guys. OK, so do we have other questions uh, before uh, we call it a day on this section? Do we have any other questions? If you have any other questions, Please let unmute our mics and ask those questions. Hi now, guys. Is... Yeah. Hi. Hi, Gide. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, on in the production environment, can you Welcome. use our uh, sensing uh, in a multi-tenant uh, 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 setup? Say, money service pro uh, provisioning for end clients. Hello, Chile. Do you get a question? Hello, Chile. Are you there? Yeah, I, I didn't get that. Yeah, I said uh, in a more in a uh, can you use uh, Asha Sentinel? Say um, you work okay. in, a co in an in an environment that you are, for instance, the managed service provision. I say you have like a Microsoft partner company, and you have end clients and or customers who you manage their Azure environments, cloud uh, 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 ecosystem. Say, can you can make a configuration, say you can um, use uh, one interface or one in, uh, uh, um, set up uh, notebook, a uh, certain notebook for say two clients, multi kind of multi-tenant uh, 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 environments. <coughs> Yes, so um, thanks for that. Um, and that's some of the um, questions we'll be getting with some of our partner space mm -hmm. where they have multiple um, customers they are monitoring and they are helping to manage service suites and mm -hmm. they are interested in provisioning um, Sentinel for them. Mm -hmm. um, however, the way Sentinel works is um, it's per subscription. Mm -hmm. So you can't um, provision one Sentinel and um, have it look across multiple subscription, mm. um, except they are under the same tenant. Um, what you could do is to leverage on the Azure Lighthouse. Um, I don't know if you know about the Azure Lighthouse, but this and allows we you are to... Using, we are using it uh, at our company. Can you hear me? We are using it at our company. We, I know about it. Hello? Hello? I said we are using it. I know about it. The connection problem. It's issue with the connection. So Hello? there was an issue with the okay, connection. So I, I, hear, I, I believe I I guess you know. the connection has not been too good today. Um, the connection is back. Yeah, I think it's 
But I think it should be back anytime. <clears throat> Okay, hello guys. You're back. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. Okay, I had to switch to a different internet provider. Okay. okay. Yeah, so what was your question? You said you use Lighthouse. Yeah, I know about Lighthouse. We're using it to uh, uh, to manage our clients' uh, uh, in, uh, cloud environment and also uh, to get like overview and stuff like that. So. The uh, it's just the sentin the uh, the Azure Sentinel. I just was looking for if the possibility, based on what I've seen, it it goes past subscription. So I was like, maybe if there's Microsoft have like a and a way where you can use one subscription for say two tenants. No, no, you won't be able to. You won't be able to. Okay. You can you can do you can do multiple subscription inside of one tenant, but mm -hmm. you can't do across two tenants. Okay, clear. Clear Test. that. Yeah. Anybody have questions? Okay, so we'll be taking the last question. So we'll be taking okay. the last question uh, before we call it the day. It's almost 8 p.m. Um, yeah. There's a question on the dashboard. I believe Mr. Gide saw that. You can answer that and we'll call it a day today. Okay, so um, I'm trying to understand what it means by the data cleaning. Does not mean data ingested are used. Hello, Mr. G. Yeah. Hello, hello, Johnson. Term I use for orchestration. Um, so data injection doesn't have anything to do with orchestration. Um, orchestration just allows you to be able to automate those response when those alerts comes in. Um, so things like when alert for multiple users um, are being brute forced or you have a brute forced account on some security or some um, I I confidential servers. Um, you have brute force attack on that. That's a re a big um, red incident. You want to send alerts immediately to the security team or to your leadership team for approval to have network being cut off from there or being have them being isolated or some of this. Um, it's basically what you would do because every time you see those alerts, you will send an email like, "Hey boss, um, we have this alert. What do we do with this?" You're, you're only trying to automate this response. And anytime you see this alert, can you send us an email? And then also send it to the boards for approval and all of that. It's just what um, orchestration is all about and the automated response. Um, for data injection, um, it's all about data injection. That's the way um, Azure Sentinel is being built. The more data you ingest, the more money you pay. Um, so, advice on what I've seen in the field, what I've seen with customers, ingest only what is necessary. Um, don't just because you have all of those data connectors and connect every one of them. Do we need data from uh, Windows event? Yes, connect your Windows event. Do we need data from um, security center? Yes, connect security center and all of that. It has to be carefully planned for before you start to ingest data into Sentinel because of the cost. Um, I don't know if there's any more question. Yeah, we have thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, I believe this should be the last questions. Um, but if we have any other questions, I think we can still continue this conversation. Yeah. Hello. Okay, so I believe this this is uh, be the last question. Okay. So if we have any other further questions, we can continue um, on the group. You can ask your questions, and uh, I know yeah, Mr. Sure. Jide is a very busy man. But if he is available and sees the question, he can give an answer to those questions. Yeah, so we can post questions if there are questions that, or there are things that we don't really understand about that. Just send an email. Can post the question uh, on the group, the WhatsApp group, and uh, he, he will be uh, willing to answer any of the questions we have. On Azure Sentinel. 
We want to thank Mr. GJ Jimo for taking his time to explain uh, Azure Sentinel to us. Azure Sentinel has been uh, a solution has been moving greatly in Africa and in in, in the whole uh, West Africa and world worldwide. And it's good that we see someone that has shown uh, to explain to us what is Azure Sentinel. We can make use of it in our environment in in where we work. And uh, if uh, for those that are still learning, we can learn more on the Azure Sentinel. I want to say thank you to Mr. GJ for taking his time to explain this to us. Tomorrow is another day. Uh, we'll continue with the learning Azure by moonlight tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be having a speaker speaking to us on Azure Load Balancer and Application Gateway. Okay, so he will be speaking to us on load balancers, how you could load balance your, your, your resources, your, your services, on Azure and using of application gateway. And um, tomorrow is another day. So I want to believe we will be there tomorrow to listen to the section. Yeah, so I want to say thank you to everyone joining on this call and they will see you tomorrow. Good night, All right. everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Me. Thank you. Bye.